My name is Hicks, R.X. Hicks. I'm your host for tonight's Gangbusters story. A real story of a crime wave in which I was one of the victims. Men who were masters of many disguises used items such as these. And uh, weapons like this to commit over 50 major crimes in the state of Connecticut. Now, in just a moment, you'll see how these vicious men operated. For the unusual story of criminals who earned the name of the Scissors Gang. September 30th, 1020 p.m. There's more than one kind of violence in the air that night. At the Avis warehouse, a human storm was about to strike. Who is it? Telegram from Mr. Avis. Open up the door. Can't. You got a sign for it. What is it? Shut up and leave it to that safe. See, I did. You'll see. Here, take these. Let's go. Because of the weapon they used at their first major crime, these vicious criminals became known as the Scissors Gang. Silk stockings are intriguing enough when worn according to fashion, but uh, the Scissors Gang found they could serve a far more dangerous purpose. We were having a little poker game for rather high stakes the night the Scissors Gang broke into my home. The 
police rushed me to the hospital and did everything they could for me. After an emergency operation that saved my life, Captain Selder and Detective Ordley waited until I regained consciousness. Mr. Hicks, this is Captain Selder, Captain of Detectives. Their faces looked awful, like zombies. We've got the ejected shells, 32 caliber, bearing the same markings we picked up at other recent shootings and two safe jobs. We believe it's the workings of a gang that's been terrorizing the whole state for months. They look like ghosts. They were wearing masks. A woman silk stocking, we believe. You're tired now, Mr. Hicks. Good luck. You'll pull through. Hi, Kane. Crack the safe, okay? Shut up. Oh, she's all right. No dame's all right. What'd you bring her here for? We got married. Oh, yeah? Wait till the boss hears. Hey, what goes? Why don't you say something? Oh, you hurt her feelings. Why, you... <laughs> big gag. What's a big idea, scissors? I'll show you. Come over here. Well? Get a load of that. And in the closet, machine guns, drills packed in oil, acetylene torches, everything. Okay, scissors, what's the next job? Next job? Do you want to know, too? Next job. There were a lot of next jobs. They were masters of disguise, and they showed their victims no mercy. Then one night, a police officer patrolling the commercial area of a Connecticut city discovered three women burglarizing a building. Masquerade was over. With their latest disguise known by the police, the Scissors Gang knew it was time to put away their stockings and dresses and devise other ways to get money. What's a pitch? Pitch? Yeah, you just don't call and say you want ten grand, don't you? Come on, Scissors, I don't like quiz games. Who are you calling? Hello? Mr. Hicks? Yes? Who is it? Scissors. Who? Remember a poker game at your house a couple of weeks ago? <sighs> that, that was the night I was shot. I just got out of the hospital. Leave me alone, will you? For ten grand. For what? For ten grand, we'll leave you alone. I, I don't have that kind of money. Then get it if you want to stay alive. But, but uh, I'd need time to raise that kind of money. I'll give you just 24 hours. And if you want to live, don't go to the cops. Police headquarters, give me Detective Captain Selden, please. recognize you, Captain. We got your signal. What's up? A telephone threat. The police work pretty fast. They managed to have someone deliver wiretapping equipment to my house. 
And that evening, Captain Selder himself showed up. I'll have to work fast. The house may be watched. I'm only supposed to be a delivery man. He, he said he, he'd kill me if I told the police. If you didn't tell us, who said he wouldn't? He said he wanted $10,000. Well, what he wants and what he'll get will be different. When did he say he'd call? Oh, uh, tomorrow. You do just as he says. And when you answer, press this button down, like this. Oh, uh, I, I see. If there's an emergency, can I call headquarters? Under no conditions. That's why this setup. On the chance he may have your phone tapped, so we couldn't trace his call. Or if he does have your line tapped, he could hear you when you call us. What'll I do about the money? My boys are hearing this now. And if they don't want to get fired, they're already calling the bank. You call the bank in the morning. Tell them you'll be after the money one hour before closing time. You know, it's my life we're taking chances with. We're fully aware of that, Mr. Hicks. Well, I've been here too long for a man delivering water. Good luck, Mr. Hicks. Delivering spring water late, huh? Tell that guy who just came out. Maybe he was delivering water. Maybe he wasn't. Make sure it isn't a trap. At police headquarters, Detective Ordley remained glued to my Taft telephone wire. I guess this is it, Captain. Operator 27. Hello? Detective Ordley speaking. Check the telephone call now being made to Manchester 1746M. Hello? Mr. Hicks? Yes? It's Scissors. We tail the man who delivered your spring water. If he hadn't checked right into the company, it would have been too bad for you. Made arrangements to get it? Yes, I have. Where? Well, the bank said they'd have it for, for me this afternoon at 2 o'clock. We'll pick it up tonight at 10 o'clock. Put the 10 grand in a paper bag. A brown paper bag. And leave it on the steps at 64 Highland Street in West Hartford. And remember, unless you want something very messy to happen to you, no cops. Call from the pay station? Lincoln Drugstore. No, too late. Don't send squad cars. You may be watching. Have a plain clothes and we'll talk to the drugger. See if you can get a description of the man who made the call. Well? Planning a trap is one thing. Yeah, with the time gets close to pulling. And a man's life depends on it. But you planned a perfect set. Yeah, with a thousand ifs. If this doesn't happen, if that doesn't happen, if he doesn't get scared and blow it, if it's this, if it's that. There's another way to even try to protect him. Maybe there is. Maybe there's a way I haven't even thought of. Selder and Ordley made their final preparations for that night's payoff. At nine that evening, just one hour before the payoff. Yes? This is Captain Selder. We've got troubles. What? The man directly across from the address where you to leave the package is set upon his front yard. Of all things, the front light, so he can see to repair his porch. What's it mean? We don't know. It could be a coincidence or a plant. So we don't dare ask him to turn it off. And the place you're going to is a boarding house. A lot of people going in and out. You still want me to go? That's not good. But you're plenty scared, huh? Yes, I am. But if I don't go, He'll be after me the rest of my life. Okay, good. And good luck. Although I was once their victim, now I was the bait. It's pretty rough playing the part of the man in the middle between the police and gangsters.
So many people are going in and out of the house, Captain. We're buffaloed. I'll report to headquarters the second anything happens. What time is it? I can't see. 11.30. It's not good. A dozen cars have stopped here already. People have gone in and out. I am cramped, cold, and hungry. This sandwich is sure good. Oh, yeah? Ham, lettuce, tomato, mustard. You better take a look and make sure the bag's still there. But if I'm being watched and approached, it'll queer things. I can't understand this gang leaving $10,000 in a paper bag like this so anybody can pick it up. Okay, I'll take a chance. Well, if they're on to us, we might as well know it. Back to the truck. Headed north. Did they touch the bag? Nope. Say, what's a milk truck doing out this time of night? Guys probably live there. It's a boarding house. But they drove off. Normally they wouldn't have to leave until 3 o'clock in the morning. But the bag's still there. I don't care. There's something phony about that truck. Get after it. Hotline. Cars assigned to case R-127. Follow a milk truck going north on 1st Avenue. Hold occupants. Apparently two milk drivers. Authority, Captain Sulter. Idea. Get out. For what? For speeding. Get out. Okay. You, get out too. Okay, Chuck, take him down to headquarters. For speeding? Just for a couple of questions. Come on, get going. I guess that's it, Ferris. Hand me the mic. Go through the truck. There may be ten grand in there. Okay. Car 27 on case R127 to Captain Selder. They're on the way down, Captain. I'll follow. The money's gone from the bag. Been taken out of the bag? How do you know? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, I'll come right down. What are we waiting for? So we was doing 50, why the fuss? We paid a fine on that stat, no? So we sit. It's okay by me. I'm good at sitting. Captain. Anything on? No. What about the trap? Clear as a whistle. We practically tore it apart. I suspected that. We got nothing to hold them on. Then that means we chat until they ask if we can hold them. I won't tell them that we can't. Bert, wait in the outer office. Now look, I was in a hurry. I was driving too fast. You are stopped at 64 Highland Street tonight. Yeah, I did. Why? I used to live there. Why tonight? 
To see a friend, Larry Tester. Was he in? Yeah, he was. You can go ask him. Captain Soda. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot. Well, they found the money. Where? In the attic of the house where the bag was got beneath the floor. Makes me out a sucker. Well, I'm glad you found whatever you were looking for. Thanks. Can I go now? In just a moment. First, we'd like to try a little experiment. I hope you don't mind. What kind of an experiment? There have been 50 crimes committed, major crimes. Hold-ups, shootings, safe cracking. And by the ejected shells found at the different locations, we're convinced it's the workings of one gang under a master criminal mind. The night an extortion attempt was made, I'm sure it was the same gang. And you think I'm one of the gang? I don't know. Now for the experiment. We sprinkled each bill in the bag with a generous portion of powder, of contiglow. Ever hear of it? No. It's a powerful fluorescent powder that sticks with you when you touch it. All over your clothes, your hands, when you rub your face, your hair, and you can't wash it off for hours. Under ordinary light, it doesn't show up. But under black light, it glows and burns. This is black light. Interesting. A person has no idea how many times he touches his face. You mind if I shine the light in your face? No. Turn off all the lights, Audley. Now I'm going to shine the black light in your face. Well, do you see anything? Worry. No. I thought you might say yes. Well, what about it? Take a look at your hands. There's the mirror. Take a look at your face. No! No, it's not me! And that was the end of the stormy career of the Scissors Gang, a career in which I played the part of a very unwilling victim. It was only through the fine work of the police that I'm able to tell this story now. Scissors and Burke finally confessed their part in the gang's vicious crimes and are now serving long terms in prison, along with Kane, who was arrested the next morning. Now, in just a moment, a gangbuster's clue to a person who is still at large and wanted by the police tonight. Attention, attention to all citizens and police. Wanted for escape from Alcatraz. Ralph Rowe, 49, six feet tall, 170 pounds, gray eyes, scar above right eyebrow. Several stars tattooed on left hand. Ralph Rowe, with at least eight arrests, was sentenced to 99 years at Alcatraz for bank robbery. Rowe escaped from Alcatraz and is now a fugitive. Approach with caution. Rowe is dangerous and may be armed. Repeat, wanted for escape from Alcatraz. Ralph Rowe, 49, six feet, 170 pounds, gray eyes, scar above right eyebrow. Do you have any information concerning this clue? Notify your local police, the FBI, or gangbusters at once. Our next authentic gangbusters case is right from the police files. And on behalf of the police, we invite you to join us. Gangbusters, created by Phillips H. Lord.
you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews.